hello, everyone! Welcome to episode number 494 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Well, happy Friday, everyone. This week, we're talking about Cadence's on-cloud platform and new protonic artificial synapses developed by MIT that run a million times faster than human ones. So first, let's welcome Mahesh Taraga from Cadence to Fish Fry, shall we? Mahesh and I are digging into the details of Cadence's on-cloud platform, why designers are turning to the cloud for EDA and system design, and a whole lot more. So without further ado, let's bring in Mahesh. Hi, Mahesh. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so Cadence just introduced Cadence on Cloud. Now, it seems like there has been a lot of excitement at Cadence Live this year about this news. So give me the rundown, Mahesh. Absolutely. I mean, as you saw at the Cadence Live, there is uh, so much excitement around this new SaaS and e-commerce platform. It's uh, powered by AWS for our customers that are looking to adopt a cloud-first approach through either a full cloud or a hybrid cloud environment. And if you look at the platform there are two key components. One is the SaaS component of it, and the other is the e-commerce component of it. So with the e-commerce component of it, the platform gives you instant access to basically come to the platform, come to our website, sign up and launch these technologies that we have in a highly secure online experience, right? Using your credit card and ACH purchasing options in a matter of minutes. So that's the key value proposition for the e-commerce piece. And with the SaaS, component of it, we basically are providing a number of the predefined packages based on our system design and analysis tools tailored for specific uh, design needs, uh, skills, and workloads, and technology domains. So this is the first thing uh, anybody has done, bringing together a SaaS platform in an e-commerce format with all these heavyweight applications. That's uh, definitely first in the industry, and we are really excited about it. And we have a lot of uh, good customer feedback, as you saw. Excellent. Now, Mahesh, what's the target market for OnCloud? So if you look at the initial target market, at least, right? I mean, in a broad sense, we want to really serve our system design and analysis customers, not only them, but in the overall system innovation space to serve our long tail customers, right? The tens of thousands of those customers. And uh, the initial target user that we have is the individual user that has a short-term project-based need or a peak usage need. So as I mentioned, you have somebody who suddenly realizes, I need to run Clarity or Allegro, for example, next hour or tonight, right? And doing some work and I need extra capacity. That user can come to the website and sign up and launch, whether it's Allegro or whether it's our CFD Fidelity technology in a matter of minutes. That's a key value proposition that we are offering this user. And then our users can collaborate with others using the platform. And also, if uh, someone is new to OnCloud, right, we are providing a premier customer support experience on OnCloud where someone can really get up and running and learn about our technology also very quickly because we have uh, self-help options with all the tutorials and getting started material that's tailored for a SaaS consumption. And then also a chatbot that you see on many other e-commerce sites where it will answer the context-specific questions uh, very intelligently. And then also we have community forums where users can interact with other users. And also, finally, the users can access our Cadence online support to reach our engineers and uh, get help. So it's basically for a lot of our new users as well as existing users that really want to leverage the short-term needs, project needs, and peak needs in the cloud. As I know, and my audience probably knows, Cadence has a broad portfolio. So how will customers know whether OnCloud or some other solution in that Cadence portfolio is the right fit for them? Yeah, so I'll talk about maybe a little bit more about value proposition, right? Why they should use OnCloud. First of all, as I mentioned, the portfolio we have is on the system design and analysis side. We are basically making available PCB design, RCAD and Allegro, System multiphysics analysis tools, Clarity, Security, and Celsius. 
and then our Fidelity CFD. So anyone looking to leverage these technologies in a matter of minutes with the peak use need, OnCloud is the right platform for them to come and get started. As I mentioned, collaboration is the key value. We have a cloud-based collaboration in here. These packages are tailored and configured to customers' needs and use cases. So the right configuration, the right compute configuration is packaged along with each of these uh, technologies. So the users looking for that kind of thing, it's definitely the platform to come. And then we also have uh, on top of this consumption-based model. So it's like an on-demand access to use whatever capacity you need as fast or as slow as we'd like. So we are providing a certain number of hours in a month for our users to come on and use as they need it. So these are some of the key values, uh, apart from productivity and security that we have. And the ease of transaction, as I mentioned early on, is that you can just come and log in, or sign up, and with a click of a button, you can really get up and running. And uh, that provides a very quick alternative to the traditional purchasing processes as well. So, and then we also have Cadence Cloudburst SaaS portfolio that we talked about the last time, right? That provides access to our front-end to back-end from pretty much all the technology that we have, from verification to sign-off to characterization on tens of thousands of CPUs in a highly secure cadence-managed environment. So whether somebody is doing logic simulation or Spectre, Cloudburst SaaS offers flexible term service options. So if users are looking for that, then we, I would recommend them going towards the Cloudburst SaaS platform for all the system design and analysis needs with an e-commerce experience uh, on cloud is the right solution. So Mahesh, what are some of the reasons you've seen that customers are leveraging the cloud for EDA and system design? And how can we help customers get there? Yeah, if you look at what is driving our customers to get to cloud, I mean, as you saw the, over the last several years, especially over the last decade or so, I mean, there's a lot of talk about really leveraging cloud. And there are a few key considerations or key factors that are driving this usage and this move to cloud. First of all, the EDA tools and system design tools really are architected uh, more and more to take advantage of the multi-core and distributed clusters, right? So many of the data centers are capacity constrained, as you know. And so customers are looking to basically go to cloud to take advantage of that scalability and the tools are there. So Cadence tools, for example, most of the tools are really well-architected, uh, re-architected to basically take advantage of the parallelization that's offered by multiple compute clusters. And then there is another key thing that happened as well is that a lot of the public cloud providers also started to make these machine types available that are suited for EDA workloads, right? Whether it's requiring the right code to memory ratios or processor speeds. And so we are able to match the designs, the compute capacity to match the EDA workloads with the optimal configuration. So that's another thing that's really making it easy for customers to look at cloud. And then at a higher level, right, at a macro level, as you know, the move towards uh, three nanometer and below is really driving the compute requirements by an order of magnitude. And uh, obviously, that's another big trend that's driving our customers to leverage cloud. And then finally, the increasing chip complexity. Every generation of the chip is more complex than the previous one. And uh, we need to really do those uh, design in context. And uh, we need to look at the entire system behavior. Cadence is offering the end-to-end -end portfolio. But that's basically is driving the need, the increasing chip complexity, to leverage the cloud scale capabilities more and more. So Mahesh, what does the ramp up look like for new on-cloud users? We are really excited to share that we have already thousands of users using OnCloud today. A number of them are using different technologies from RCAD to Allegro to Clarity to Security to Fidelity CFD. And some of them are doing like advanced PCB design using Allegro. Some are using the CFD applications to do some meshing or also to run some compute heavy jobs in the cloud. To give you a little bit of a flavor of who those are, right? So we have endorsements from almost 25 plus customers, really happy customers across a broad spectrum, right? So if you look at our endorsements, so we have from uh, universities, uh, startups to some of our mainstream customers, as well as our, some large marquee names as well, who really have seen the value of on cloud, which is flexibility, instant accessibility, and then scalability on demand. I can give a couple of examples. One is uh, CNA eCAD. 
they used on cloud. They are one of the leading PCB design companies in India. And they used on cloud to do advanced PCB design in the cloud and uh, talked about the instantaneous access that on cloud provided them to help with the peak demands and uh, improve their productivity significantly. We also have uh, a user from Bombardier that basically tested CFD analysis package that is powered by our Fidelity brand. And they talked about how OnCloud really provided the right computational resources for meshing in the cloud and how intuitive the user experience is. Fantastic. Well, Mahesh, I think it's time for your off-the-cuff question. So let's talk about golf, something we both share a love for. So tell me, how did you get involved with golf? And uh, what's better, your long game or your short game? Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love I love golf as you do as well. And uh, I mean, it started off early on. I was looking to see what's something that I can do with my kids together, like to form like long-term memories. And also I can do it like lifelong, right? I think uh, golf is the one that really fit the bill to build those memories and keep doing it as long as we are alive, right? So golf doesn't uh, discriminate whether you're a small kid or whether we are later in life, later stages in life, anyone can play the game. So that's how we got interested in golf and my kids uh, thankfully supported that and they are interested as well as I started to take them to the driving range and all. So yeah, I mean, during pandemic, that actually helped a lot. I mean, we used to, when everything else was shut down, golf was uh, on, right? Everyone was still playing and a lot more people took up golf uh, during that time. So yeah, that's one of the good things that I enjoy with the family, with the kids. My short game versus long game, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, my long game is getting better, but I rely more on my short game to keep my score down. How about you? Me as well. <laughs> I absolutely understand. I am a great mini golfer. So I've just tried to transition that expertise onto the longer game and I'm slowly getting there. I'm, <laughs> I'm slowly getting there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Well, as always, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Mahesh. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. The pleasure is mine. Have you heard about the new artificial synapse developed by MIT that runs a million times faster than the human brain? And the secret to its success? An analog design that moves around protons rather than electrons. Okay, so at the heart of this new Synapse Breakthrough by MIT is a new type of programmable resistor. And these devices can switch to either block ions or conduct ions. And when you put these resistors into an array, they can actually process and transmit information like natural neurons and synapses. So what makes these new resistors at MIT so special? Well, the biggest change is their solid electrolyte, which in this case is made out of phosphosilicate glass, or PSG. Now, PSG is important here because it has a very high proton conductivity, especially at room temperature. Its nanoscale pores actually allow protons to pass through its structure while blocking electrons at the same time. And when an electric field is applied, up to 10 volts, these protons can move through this stack at an extremely fast speed, making this kind of analog processor a million times faster than previous versions including our very own synapses. Another important aspect of these resistors is their robustness. They do not break down after millions of cycles. And this has a lot to do with the size and mass of the protons. And because PSG is also an insulator against electrons, there isn't much electric current running through it, thus reducing its overall energy usage while also keeping it from heating up. From here, this team from MIT plans to alter the design of these resistors in order to manufacture them in larger amounts. And then from there, work on producing arrays to see how they can work together. So if you want even more information about this super cool Synapse story, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com. 
Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. And by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. It really does help. Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of August 12th, 2022, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.